to the show. Today, it's all about small spaces and making the most out of the space you've got. So of course, we're gonna start in the kitchen. So fun fact about me, I used to live in a apartment. It was a tiny little apartment, three story walk up. I loved it so much. It had the world's smallest kitchen. Well, maybe not the world's smallest kitchen, but for someone who works in food, Pretty tiny, not gonna lie. I lived in that apartment for about 10 years. I auditioned for MasterChef Canada when I lived in that apartment. I started in recipe development and I even started in TV. So this little apartment was tiny. I uh, shot some Your Morning segments there. This is it, you can see it. To be honest, from this shot, this is a, a complimentary angle, not gonna lie. Uh, if I reached out my left hand at any point during this, I could basically touch my stove. Um, it made it very handy. I only had to stand really in one spot the whole time I was making anything. Um, I had one drawer, truly one drawer. Uh, all those cupboards up at the top there, there was one for cups, one for plates, but really that was it. What you see is what you get. Um, when I first moved into that apartment, the counter space I had was a little corner about this big. So my husband Aaron at that point, boyfriend, ooh, ah, uh, <laughs> built me like a counter that I could work off of and that's what you saw in that clip. Honestly, I loved working in that kitchen despite its tiny size. I developed recipes for social media and my blog at the time. Basically, I, I caught the bug of sharing my recipes with everybody who would want to kind of make them. I've always loved sharing food and in that kitchen, I was really able to kind of expand who I shared that food with. Now, because of the size, everything had its place. Now, I had these like knife magnets. I still have them to this day. They're very, very handy because again, I only had one drawer, hardly any counter space. So knife magnets had their spot. All my knives I used the most were on that wall, including all the little like gadgetry that could also get stuck up there. Using that vertical space was key in that apartment. But despite its size, it, basically the whole apartment could fit in the kitchen space of this studio. I also wrote my very first cookbook in that kitchen and I even shot all the photos in it. Yeah, I took over the living and dining room, which was one small room. My husband was very nice. I thought if we could make that work, we could make marriage work. <laughs> it's a good thing. This is us doing our dishes because he's my resident dish doer. It's honestly, it's one of my favorite things in the world. It's so, so great. But speaking from experience, in order to work within a small space, especially in the kitchen, I've got a few recommendations for the essentials that you need to make cooking a total breeze, even in the smallest space. So let's start over here with the hot stuff. Now, maybe you've got a stove, maybe you have a full oven. To be honest, what I actually wrote that cookbook on and shot that cookbook on was one of those apartment-sized stoves with the one big burner, and it's the only one that really worked. The rest of the stove, uh, one time, the first time I tried to make cupcakes, cupcake tin didn't fit in there. So I had to go and buy all new stuff. Um, so I'm gonna talk about like the extra hot stuff if you don't have that, uh, or if you do have that oven space. So the first thing I wanna talk about is a kettle. Now kettles are a must for me, even if you have a big kitchen. This is such a space saver, a time saver, and an energy saver. If you need to boil water for even making pasta in a hurry, this baby is perfect. It boils it way quicker than you're ever gonna do on the stove. It saves a lot of heat energy, so you're saving on that electricity bill or gas bill. It's absolutely perfect. I love a kettle, it's a total must. Also, who doesn't love a cup of tea in the morning? <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> now, in addition to that, if you have the room, a microwave is always a good thing. Much to the chagrin of my mom, we do not have a microwave in our house. I've not had a microwave in about 16 years, but this baby is a total must, I know. Impressive, right? I miss it for coffee, warm-ups, and popcorn, not gonna lie. But this baby is a great thing, especially if you're not someone who wants to cook really elaborate meals. You can do a lot of stuff in the microwave. You can get uh, squashes ready to go in the oven, easier to cut in half. Really, really handy tool to have. So we've got our hot things over here. Now we're gonna move into mixing things, stuff you need to actually prepare the meal. So on this show and any sort of show, my, my cooking show and things like that, you see me using beautiful glass bowls. And we do that so you can see what's going on in those bowls. But I'm not gonna lie, at home, I don't have glass bowls. I have stackable metal bowls, ones that nest inside each other, because essentially all you need to have room for is this biggest bowl. Everything else just stacks inside. They're durable. If you do have a small space, I'm betting you might not have a dishwasher, so you're not gonna break these in your sink when you're trying to scrub them up. Really, really handy and a total must. They're light, they last forever, and they're perfect. Now, one thing that I do say that you need a little bit of space for is a good cutting board. 
Now I've been, I think everyone's been gifted those like tiny little cute ones. And you're like, oh my gosh, I love it. I love tiny things. It feels like it's for a dollhouse, but you really, you could cut a grape on it, end of list. Maybe like some uh, uh, citrus for, you know, cocktails. But with a cutting board, essentially, what you're looking for in terms of size is get your biggest knife, so mine is a chef's knife, and place it diagonally on a cutting board surface. You need about two or three inches of space on either side to either kind of diagonal corner around that knife, and that's gonna make sure you have enough room to actually use that knife on that cutting board. If I were to try to use this knife on a small little cutting board, dollars to donuts, I'm probably gonna cut myself, and I don't wanna do that. That wastes time in the kitchen and doesn't taste very good. So that is a key that you might need a little bit of space for. Now, if you don't love chopping or it's not like that finesse isn't your thing, I do love kind of a small food processor. I'm not much of a gadget gal. I like my microplane. I like my small food processor. With this little baby, if you want to be adventurous, you can make mayonnaise in it. You can make pesto in it. You can make salsa in it. You can chop your onions for anything just in case you're not looking for that perfect dice. This baby is perfect for that. It works like a dream. Now, over here, I've got the kind of final things. If you only have room for like one pan and one main utensil, everybody, in my opinion, should have a basic cast iron skillet. Not the fancy one, just go and get the basic one. Yes, it's heavy, but it's pretty much indestructible. It works beautifully on pretty much any stove you've got. It can go into the oven as well, so it doubles as a baking dish. You can roast a whole chicken in this baby and you've got a beautiful dinner. So that's like your one pan and done. And then in terms of like a stirring or flipping or scooping thing, I really like these like spoony type spatulas. This works for anything from cakes to flipping a grilled cheese to flipping an egg. You are good to go with this and it's absolutely perfect. Now about thriving in our small spaces. And sometimes we're looking to make something a bit beyond that classic like university vibe ramen noodle in our tiny little kitchens. You know what I'm talking about? I, I mean, they're always delicious, but sometimes we want something a bit healthier. So we are making my couscous tabbouleh. It is easy, packed with veg, and it is ready in a flash. Almost as much of a flash as that instant ramen that we all know and love. So. I'm gonna get to work first on my couscous. Couscous is great because you don't actually have to like boil it like you would another type of grain or pasta. It essentially steams. So you can do this with just plain water, but I like to amp up the flavor with a little bit of broth. Now, if you were using broth, you'd probably wanna use the stove or the microwave to heat things up, but we're gonna use the kettle today. So as opposed to putting broth in my kettle and making it kind of weird, my next cup of tea kind of tastes like chicken soup. <laughs> not the best thing in the world, I'm gonna use bouillon. Now, bouillon kinda has fallen out of fashion, but basically it's just dehydrated stock. You can get it in cubes, you can get it in powders, you can sometimes even get it in kind of like a really nice paste. But essentially you want about one and a half teaspoons of that bouillon. So I've got it in a cube here, so I'm just gonna toss that right on into my bowl. And this little baby is like packed with savory, delicious flavor. I'm using vegetable bouillon, but you could also use chicken for this for sure. Now into there, I'm gonna add about one and a half cups of boiling water. Fresh boiling water from the kettle. Again, saves time, because I didn't have to boil it on the stove. If you wanted to, you could totally do this in the microwave. Wait, where are we? 12 ounces, that's one and a half cups. I got it, kitchen measurement. We're good to go. Now I'm just gonna add this on into the bowl. And since I'm using the brick style of bouillon, it tends to be a little hard. So I'm just gonna kind of mush it up a little bit first. And you can feel these babies are salty. You know, we won't need to add any extra salt into this mix. But basically this gives you like instant kind of broth. It's super, super nice. Anything that doesn't dissolve will dissolve once that water gets heaten. So add that in. Now, in addition to that bouillon in that water, I'm also gonna flavor this up with a little bit of turmeric. Turmeric is really, really nice. It's super bright and yellow. It kind of gives, um, remember that chicken noodle soup that you'd have when you were a kid when you weren't feeling good and it was like neon highlighter yellow? That's thanks to turmeric. It's super tasty. It's a little bit lemony. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of that on into my bowl. So that's gonna give a nice kind of brightness into here and like instantly it looks gorgeous. Now, when you're making couscous, you wanna use equal parts liquid to that couscous. Not like uh, pearl couscous, but traditional couscous. You can use whole wheat, you can use regular. So I've got one and a half cups of broth, so one and a half cups of that couscous goes straight on in. Give that a little bit of a mix up, just to kind of incorporate everything. 
And then since couscous steams, you do want to cover this bowl. You could use plastic wrap, but I'm just going to pop a dinner plate right on top because that's going to keep things easy for cleanup for me later, especially key when you got a tiny little kitchen. Now we've used that kettle. We're good to go. Now I'm going to show you, obviously, we're gonna cut some stuff, cause we are cooking. So I'm gonna cut up a couple of cherry tomatoes. So you can either have or quarter these. Again, I'm using a cutting board that is big enough for my knife. Anytime I try using those teeny tiny little cutting boards, they look cute, but again, they're not your friend. They're decorations. Put your little salt shaker on there. It's like a coaster. It's not a cutting board. It's not gonna work great. So just have or quarter those little cherry tomatoes. And to be honest, any time, no matter the time of year, unless it's like peak, July, August, perfect tomato season, I'm buying cherry tomatoes. They're always nice and bright and fresh. They're never kind of like that sad tomato vibe where you cut it open and you're like, why are you pink? <laughs> what happened to you? You're not a tomato. All right, I'm gonna pop those on into my serving bowl because I'm essentially gonna bring everything together into there along with some more. And then into there as well, I wanna add in some more kind of classic tabbouleh flavors. So the first thing I need is some red onion. Now, if I wanted to, I could chop this red onion up real nice and fine. We could do a nice mince. I'm not gonna do that today. I'm gonna use my handy dandy little chopper. So just toss that onion right on into there. Pop that lid on. We are not going for finesse here right now. We're going for speed. And just as fast as that, we're chopped up. So that was a breeze. Way better than I, I was ready for it to take a bit longer, and that was a, that was delightful for me. All right, pop that onion right on into that bowl along with that tomato. Then I also want to chop up some cucumber. Now, if I wanted to, I could totally throw it in here. I have some handy dandy friends in the back who chopped up my cucumber for me. If you got that, also makes quicker work. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm just gonna add those in. But again, if you wanted to and didn't want those big chunks, pop it into that mini chop, and it'll chop everything up beautifully. So that's looking great. Now we've got this couscous here. Let me take a little gander at it. This usually takes about anywhere from like five to 10 minutes to really be done. But even as quickly as this, that's absorbed all of that liquid. Like look at that beautiful couscous. This is something, I know this sounds really fancy, but sometimes in the morning when I'm making myself a cup of tea or a pour over coffee, I'll just make up some couscous at the same time, bring it for lunch, and you feel like a real like Martha Stewart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, give that a mix up. I'm gonna add that couscous on into this bowl. Just toss that on in. We've got all that flavor from that beautiful, beautiful bouillon. That nice turmeric in there too. Give that a little bit of a toss up with my handy dandy spoony spatula. Feeling good. Now, anytime you are making a tabbouleh, the main thing about it is the herbs. So you want a good amount of herbs in here. You want about one and a half cups of parsley. You can use those stalks as well. I'm gonna toss those right on into my chopper. And you want about half a cup of some mint. Again, the stems are gonna be fine because you're gonna chop those up nice and fine. Pop that in. Oh, everything's on, nailed it. Again, just chop it up. You might have to push some things down. Classic gadget. Robots, they're out to get me. Sometimes they don't work on TV as well as they do at home. All right, so we're gonna pretend that's all nice and minced. Just take that beautiful mixture, which smells so bright and fresh. Pop that on in there. You've got all of that beautiful herbs. I'm gonna pull out the big ones. We're gonna give a little bit of a toss. And that looks beautiful. Now, a little bit of lemon zest on there, a little bit of lemon juice to brighten things up, a bit of oil. You could season it with some salt and pepper, but because of that bouillon, it's gonna be nice and salty already. That, to me, looks like about a thousand times better than a bowl of ramen, I'm not gonna lie. Perfect to eat. Serve it up with a little bit of some store-bought tzatziki, some store-bought hummus if you wanna get fancy. Pop a little sun-dried, or uh, roasted red peppers on top of there, makes it Look like you made it yourself. If you really wanna go fancy and trendy, a little bit of chili crisp on there too. Pop it on. Some baba ganoush pita. You have got a feast for your friends and you didn't even use your stove. You're making this in your tiny kitchen and you're a total kitchen hero. We gotta hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.